favorite girl, Tyler Nicole Taylor, TNT, if you love me. Welcome back to my channel. Um, yeah, I'm really digging this high ponytail situation that I got going on here. And I checked, I looked at myself and it's a little crooked. I don't, I don't really know how to fix it, but we gonna work with it. <laughs> if you are new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. I hope you take some time to not only watch this video, but check out some of the other videos that I have on here. I am somebody who just loves this whole shit about relationships. I'm not an expert. I don't fancy myself a guru or anything like that. And I'm not saying that any advice or things that I have to say is just law or golden. It's just what I think. And it's just something I like to share with you all. So, that's who I am, that's what I do. So today, I was actually inspired to do this video um, by one of my friend's Facebook status. My friend Adam Butler, hey Adam, he posted a status today which said, what is the biggest thing that you learned from a failed relationship? Or what is the biggest lesson you learned from a failed relationship? But it got me to thinking, I have a few lessons that I've learned. So I decided, heck, why not do a video and share those lessons with you guys? So sit back, relax. We're going to go through the 10 things that I've learned from my failed relationships. So one of the lessons that I learned from a failed relationship is that open relationships just ain't my jam. Now, I do have a video talking about the time that I was in an open relationship. Um, it was an experience, and honestly, at the time, it was perfect for what I was going through. But to be quite honest, I knew that it wasn't something that would have a longevity type of situation to it. Now, deep down inside, I wanted to try to make it work, but, and I thought, oh, by doing this, you know, maybe this will be helpful to our relationship, me being understanding and child by. That just was not my jam. There were some perks. Watch the video. That's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> um, okay, another thing that I learned from failed relationships is patience is key. Um, a lot of times I let my goals and my own timeline kind of dictate how I moved in relationships and it made me impatient, it made me come off bratty, it made me come off like I wanted to marry the person tomorrow when that really wasn't what I wanted to do, but I wanted to know that the person that I was dating was dating me with the intent of, okay, this might be somebody I could potentially marry. But I didn't articulate that well, and I let the fact that I was so impatient just take over that situation, and it made me look like a crazy person, really. <laughs> so I learned that it's okay to be patient. Just taking some time out to really determine if this relationship is something worth taking to the next level doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Whew. Okay, this next one, y'all. This one was a hard one to learn. But it was to stop going back to that same old relationship that had the same old unresolved problems. That's where that whole, if you broke up with them, you probably did it for a good reason cliche comes into play because it's the truth. There, there's no amount of time in between you two being together that's going to erase whatever the unresolved issue is. Like, if y'all can't solve it peacefully and together, then nine times out of 10, it ain't gonna work out anyway and you're going to fail. And if you keep trying to go back because of course, you know, you want that old thing back, you still love your ex or whatever it is that keeps you going back. If you don't deal with whatever those issues are, you guys can't move forward. Okay, so the next thing that I learned was closed mouths do not get fed. Okay, yeah, that sounds really cool in those hip hop songs, <laughs> but it's true. Open your mouth and let people know what you like and what you don't like. That is okay. I know a lot of times though, we do get a little scared to do that because we're afraid to, that our expectations is going to scare people away. And honestly, I think it's okay to have expectations. 
Unrealistic expectations? Not so much. But expectations, I mean, very simple. Like, you go to work, you do work, right? At the end of the week, don't you expect to get paid? Or at the end of your pay period, don't you expect to get your check? Well, when you're in a relationship, giving your time and giving of yourself to someone, and as they should be to you, you expect to be treated a certain way. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't voice what that is, they won't always know. Another thing that I learned from, a fail from failed relationships is speak up for yourself. Um, I used to think that I had to be, uh, I hate this word, sassy when speaking up for myself. And that you don't necessarily have to do that. And I learned that the hard way because when I was, you know, being all about how I was speaking up for myself, it came off wrong. Like that just comes off wrong, it reads wrong, like nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to even have to deal with you. If you gotta be rolling your neck all the time when you're speaking up for yourself, you know, it's just like that gets exhausting dealing with that every single time, I'm just saying. Sometimes you gotta take it there, it just doesn't have to be every time. Because that didn't work out before with me rolling my neck and doing all that extra stuff and being extra when speaking up for myself, I ended up getting to a point where I stopped speaking up for myself because it's like I didn't know what the middle was. So I completely stopped speaking up for myself. I just would try to always figure out a way to be flexible, figure out a way to just get around it, figure out a way to not have to address the problem. No, that don't work either. <laughs> And I also had to learn that don't wait until the final straw to speak up for yourself. Address it when it happens. This next one is a doozy. Um, I learned that there is power in the vulnerability of a woman. <laughs> I have always been a very independent, strong person. I mean, even when I was a small little person, I was always very independent, always wanted to do things myself, always, okay? So that is my personality, true and blue. Trying to still be that person in relationships can be tricky. And a lot of times, I think we have a tendency to think that in order to be a strong person, you don't show any signs of vulnerability, but that's absolutely incorrect. And I also think that as women, a lot of times, we're afraid to tap into the vulnerability that is, you know, specific to us as women. That ends up being a disadvantage when dealing with other people. Because being vulnerable and showing who you are will really make people understand the way they treat you has its consequences. And how it affects not only you, but how it makes them feel. So I think it, make, it brings like a human aspect to you as a woman and your relationship. There's no rule that in order to be a strong, independent woman, you can't be vulnerable. That is not true. You absolutely can. I learned that I shouldn't fight my man like I'm a man. I shouldn't go toe to toe with him matching his aggression. Um, why? Because I am a woman and I'm far more powerful than he is. That is why I had to learn how to tap into my superpower as a woman and fight like a woman because women are smarter. And when I say smarter, we have a tendency to be a little more emotionally intelligent than men. Speak your peace without being just as aggressive as him. This is a good one because I've been seeing a lot of a lot of memes on social media about this particular topic. But I have learned this from previous, previously failed relationships. Um, it is okay to teach him how to love you without you becoming his mother. Nine times out of 10, you're not gonna get somebody that's gonna automatically just know how to love you. It just doesn't make sense. And honey, you're not gonna know how to love him off the bat either. Like, come on. That's just unrealistic and it's an unfair um, 
requirement or expectation to place on someone. So don't come up in here trying to love me like you love them. You're going to love me how I need you to love me. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, I am very much a firm believer that if you have been articulating that, you've been showing how to love you, you know, showing him how to love you and been trying to teach him how to love you, and he refuses to get the lesson or he just seemingly doesn't care, then yeah, toss that thing to the side. That shit is dead. I used to think that, oh, if he's the right person for me, he's just, he's going to know what to do. You can't expect people to just know off the bat how to treat you. Yes, there is common courtesy and just certain things that are decent and respectful, obviously, but when it comes down to actually loving you, it is okay to teach him how to love you. So this next one is a little harder and I feel like I didn't truly start actually exercising this until my current relationship. I recognized this lesson from previous relationships and, my, and mainly just from the breakups of these relationships. That's where I started to really recognize what this is and understand it. But that thing is, even that, even when you're both at your worst, you have to choose each other every single day. That shit is hard. And it's not hard in the way that you think. It's not hard like, oh, I gotta love them every day. Oh, that's so hard. No, I'm talking about when they're being mean and you guys are in an argument and you're being mean and y'all both just going at it and just not really fighting each other like y'all are a unit. You're fighting each other like enemies. That's when you have to exercise to choose each other every day. That's where that comes into play. It is hard when you are in that mood, in that heightened sense, and you're hypersensitive, and you're just like, I, I, I really could leave right now, or I wouldn't care if this motherfucker never called me. Well, even in that space, when you start to calm down, that's when you have to start, that's when you have to determine, do I still love this person? When I got into the fights that ended my relationships in the past, it felt like the separation from the guy and me happened so quickly. It was like, it was almost like they was waiting for one big fight so that they can get out of there. And that's what made me realize, dang, you, you actually wasn't rocking with me as much as you thought, or as much as I thought. I don't know who got bamboozled here, if it was you or if it was me or if it was both of us. What I do know is you damn sure wasn't rocking with me as hard as you thought or as hard as I thought. So therefore, you been stopped choosing me and I didn't know it. This last one, it's the worst one and it's the hardest, in my opinion, the hardest one to learn. And that is no matter how much you love somebody, if y'all just are no good for each other, it will never work. It's so weird how I always came to that realization in my past relationships. It was like, we're having fun. Yeah, we have our arguments and stuff, and we're just doing this relationship thing. We're doing it. We're doing it. And then it was almost like it hits me like an epiphany. Out of nowhere, it's like, boop. This person ain't right for you. And it's like, what are you talking about? I love him now. I've been doing this thing for a year. I've been doing this thing for two years. How? How? How is he not meant to be for me? How? What do you mean? No, I'm not listening to that. I'm going to keep on doing this thing. That's what I did every time. Every time. And when it ended, I always felt like, damn girl, you knew. You knew. You knew he wasn't for you. And every single time when I would get out of that relationship and I can see it from the outside looking in like everybody else, it was things that I realized, oh my gosh, yeah, we never would have worked. There are certain things that I like to call fundamental differences. And if you have fundamental differences or moral differences with somebody and you're trying to be in a relationship with them, it's going to be really, really, really difficult for y'all to really have longevity. That was something that I learned and it was the biggest lesson that I learned. You cannot make anybody be with you no matter how much you love them. Those were the 10 things that I learned from my past relationships. So I'm going to say shout out to them because thanks for the lessons, guys.
because yeah, I'm a better person for it, okay? It's up to you guys to recognize those lessons and those teachable moments and really reapply them to your lives so that you can grow into the beautiful, better version of yourself, right? I mean, after all, we're all trying to evolve to be better versions of ourselves for the most part. So, hopefully that helped you guys out. If you had, if you actually have experienced any of those things, go ahead and drop a comment below, let me know. If you have other lessons that you've learned that you wanna share, drop it below. I wanna know, what are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned from your past failed relationships? That is all for this video. If you stuck around to the very end, give this thing a big old thumbs up so I know that you stuck around. And if you like me, you can subscribe if you feel like it.